Making headlines first at nine, safety ensured. The police mulling over appointing the first woman OIC for the security of women candidates during election. We understand that violence against women in elections can undermine women's political participation. Because we have got a couple of selections, and we have just wanted to get it through and get the consent. Making life a part of Christmas, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit urges people to make Christmas a time of reflection and prayer. I would also like to appeal that Christmas be made a celebration without damaging and harming nature. End to poverty, Professor Amarathunga says, despite significant improvements in poverty alleviation in Sri Lanka, serious disparities in income still remain. The work to end extreme poverty is far from over and a number of challenges still remain. An end to mendicancy, Minister Partly Champika Ranavaka reveals the latest 18 million rupee government facility to rehabilitate the homeless. The capital struggle. Palestine is set to call for an emergency meeting of the UN General Assembly over the Jerusalem issue. and a warm welcome to Other Than a 24 7 First at 9. We begin with your top stories making news from across the island. The necessary process towards local government elections are well on their way with political parties and candidates gearing up for their campaigns. The upcoming election is set to witness an increase to women participation as the government recently took measures to increase women representation. With this in mind, Sri Lanka police assures top-level security for women political candidates at the upcoming local government election. The police also emphasizes that uh, flouting of election laws will not be tolerated irrespective of party politics or stature. The Handbook on Violence Against Women in Election, which is compiled by the International Foundation for Electoral Systems with the support of the Sri Lankan Election Commission and Sri Lanka Police, was launched today. The handbook was officially handed over by Australian High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, Bryce Hutchison, to IGP Pooji Jayasundara at the police headquarters. We are in the process of trying to get our best two first women OIC officers in charge of Sri Lanka Police to be appointed in the near future because we have got a couple of selections. We have just wanted to get it proved and get the consent from the National Police Commission as well as the Election Commission. And then comes the election. As I clearly understood why they are very reluctant to come forward and try their best to become uh, representatives of the people because they are in fear. They must have thought or they must be thinking that they are not secured enough to go ahead with the process. It is not so, but we are concerned. It's our duty, the Sri Lanka police, to clear and make the way for them to come forward. And for these elections, as usual, of course, the senior DIG administration has been appointed at the senior DIG elections. We are very impartial and we are very strict on the election laws. And that will be definitely implemented irrespective of any difference. Meanwhile, Chief of Party of the International Foundation for Electoral Systems, Beverly Hagedan, also expressed views on women's representation in the upcoming election. Since the last two years, the International Foundation for Electoral Systems is on mission in Sri Lanka as per the invitation of the Election Commission. We understand that violence against women in elections can undermine women's political participation. With more women coming into the local government elections in February through this 25 percent quota, we believe that a focus needs to be developed on what the potential areas and challenges may be by having this many more women become a part of this process, which has in the past in Sri Lanka been highly volatile. We believe this is therefore an urgent issue. And the submission of election nominations for 248 local government bodies continued for a second day today. The deadline for submission of nominations falls at noon on Thursday. 
TSLFP handed over nominations for the Dulapitiya, Atanagala, Mirigama and Katana Pradesh Sabhas and the Katunayaka Sidhu Municipal Council under the patronage of former President Chandrika Banda Nayak Kumarudunga. Madam Hitapu, then I think the Rajapak Matagina, Machinui, Cementi Kotai, Sali Bedanoike. State Minister Lakshman Yapa Bevardhan presided over the UPFA's handover of nominations for a number of local government bodies in the Mathur district. If someone who supported the UPFA for many years suddenly asks not to vote for it, the people must immediately decide to reject them. Meanwhile, the SLFP handed over nominations for the Pathahewa Hatta Pradesh Sabha in the Kandy district under the patronage of Minister S.P. Disanayaka. The UNP handed over nominations for the Mathura Municipal Council and Urban Council under the patronage of Minister Mangala Samarvira. Uh, the issue that has arisen in the SLFP is an internal problem. However, amid that problem, I request the SLFP not to allow the return of old faces, making this country a den of thugs and commission seekers. The JVP submitted nominations for the Dodanguda Pradesh Sabha under the patronage of MP Dr. Nalinda Jayathissa. We request the people to vote for the JVP against the government's fraud, corruption and unpunished crimes. Meanwhile, the SLFP deposited bonds for four local government bodies in the Polonaru district under the patronage of Chief Minister of the North Central Province, Peshwala Jayaratna. Representing the National People's Party, Western Provincial Councillor Srinath Pereira deposited bonds for the Colombo and Kaduela Municipal Councils. In the meantime, SLPP candidates for the Maharagama Urban Council requested the Chairman of the Elections Commission to act in a fair manner over the rejection of their nomination paper. We request the Chairman of the Elections Commission to understand that it took three years to remove technical errors in the Act. It is difficult to remove technical errors at once in a nomination paper. Upon that argument, we request him to overlook that error and give the people a chance. With local government elections declared, it has become the popular topic of debate in the political arena and today was no different. They are distributing cement and bricks, everything but coffins. They are trying to gain through distributing items. We ask the election commission, which claims to be independent, as to whether their independence lies with the government alone. We'd like to remind them of the ruling against Lalit Viratunga. The SLPP is a den of robbers. The UNP too robbed the country. The cleanest seat is that of the president. Meanwhile, former UNP urban councillor of Kalutara, Lasit Sukumal Pereira, met former president Mahindra Rajpaksha and pledged his alliance to the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna. Subsequently, former president Mahindra Rajpaksha responded to questions raised by media. This is completely false. There was no such proposal and the president is not a fool to even suggest it. If such a proposal is made, I would not be a fool to reject it. Meanwhile, during a media briefing, the Sri Lanka Freedom Party spoke on taking action against SLFP members who support the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna. The president pointed out the procedures mentioned in the constitution and said he had been very patient as the party's leader and suggested an evidence-gathering program be launched to bring disciplinary action against ministers who engage in such acts. He said we need not wait until the election is finished. This fact was leaked after the meeting and they were frightened. The SLFP cannot go forward with the jokers in the SLPP. Knowing that they cannot win this election, they deliberately got their nomination papers rejected. Meanwhile, Deputy Minister of Home Affairs Nimal Lanza resigned from his post today. In his letter of resignation forwarded to President Maithribal Sirisena, he alleged that he had been continually denied the post of electoral organizer for Negambo despite his persistent requests. Chairman of the Central Environmental Authority, Professor Lal Dharmasiri, revealed that a strict polythene ban will be in place during the upcoming election period. The authorities moved to crack down on polythene use during the upcoming polls came at a media briefing held in Colombo today. All decorations for political campaigns that are done using polythene are completely banned. This not only leads to environmental issues, but also issues between different political parties. That's why we will be looking forward to implementing this law sternly. 
We ask everybody to obey the law. We will start raiding polythene manufacturing companies. And by January, we will start arresting polythene sellers who do so on wholesale. The organization Elia alleges that the present government is meting out justice in a selective manner. The allegation was leveled by members of the organization at a media briefing held in Colombo today. Commodore DKP Dasanayak and five other sailors are in remand custody today over the alleged disappearance of 11 Tamils. However, there is no evidence. We don't ask not to investigate it. A search should be carried out for the 11 people and those connected to the disappearances should be punished. No one asks not to do that. But we consider arresting naval officers of Navy without reason to satisfy the Tamil diaspora as a crime. We are not against punishing those who committed offences. It should happen. And the fact that it's not happening is a curse in this country. But the issue here is that justice is meted out selectively. There is one law for the governing party and another for the opposition. Today, the courts remain open until nightfall to hear cases against opponents whenever the government wants to. Who gives this order? And Prime Minister of Malaysia, Najib Razak, who arrived in the country for a three-day official visit, concluded his tour and left the island this evening. Before leaving the country, the Malaysian Premier met with his Sri Lankan counterpart, Ranil Vikramasinghe. During the meeting between Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe and the Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak, a number of factors were given attention. Secretary to the Prime Minister Sama Nekanayake and several ministers also joined the discussions. Malaysian Prime Minister then joined a function in Colombo to sign a plaque commemorating the partnership between the two countries in setting up the lubricant blending plant in Muturajwala, which is to be commissioned next year. The total investment for the lubricant blending plant is 30 million US dollars. Prime Minister of Malaysia Najib Razak concluded his three day visit to Sri Lanka and left for Malaysia from the Bandaranaike International Airport in Katunaika this evening. Homelessness has become a bitter pill for the country to swallow, with numerous people pushed towards begging and very little help available to turn their lives around. Now the government has set up a rehabilitation centre for the homeless in a bid to arrest the situation. Minister of Megapolis and Western Development Partly Champigaranavaka spoke on the new facility at a media briefing held in Colombo today. We conducted a census on the homeless living in the city of Colombo. Accordingly, we are working on rehabilitating them. For that, the Ministry of SB Disanayaka, along with the Southern Provincial Council, with the intervention of our ministry, has built a centre for rehabilitation for the homeless at a cost of 80 million rupees. These people should not suffer on roads anymore. According to our statistics, there are around 600 beggars who are helpless and beg as a profession. We kindly request them to leave their job. Some of them have mental illnesses, physical illnesses, gotten used to drugs and it is our responsibility to let them live as humans. If you have difficulties in living, come and meet the charity commissioner. We take measures to provide them jobs. Our target is not the beggars who earn 20 to 30,000 rupees from beggary per day. We will try for one more month and if we fail, we will take legal measures under the Urban Council Act. As for the children, we give them school education and release back to the society. Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit calls all celebrating Christmas to share the festivities with reflection and prayer in the humblest possible form. His Eminence made the uh, plea delivering a special Christmas message at the Archbishop House today. On another note, the streets of Colombo will be illuminated through the Christmas season and into the new year. Ministry of Christian Affairs and the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority launched an initiative to light up Colombo streets for the festive season for the third consecutive year. Under this initiative, Janadi Primavata, Gaul Road up to Bambalapitiya, Bauda Lokamavata, Duplication Road up to Bambalapitiya, Reed Avenue, Tumula Junction, Union Place, Pitala Junction, Ibanvilla Junction, Liberty, Golf Face and Lake House roundabouts will be illuminated from today through to the first week of January. What is important is when we celebrate Christmas to focus our attention on life and very specially on human life. 
For this reason, let us welcome life in all its forms as part of the celebration of Christmas. Very specially, let us love our children and focus attention on our children as much as possible. Because our children is the richness of our heritage. They will make this world tomorrow. Christmas reminds us that we have to love our children, protect our children, protect their rights. I would also like to appeal that Christmas be made a celebration without damaging and harming nature and make Christmas more a matter of reflection and prayer and a moment of happiness which is shared with all the others in the humblest possible form which is not offensive to others, which is positive and helpful to bring relationships together and make Christmas a celebration that is deeply spiritual. The Manusav Derana Little Hearts Project, reaching out to save the lives of children suffering from heart disease, giving them a fresh chance at life, received a 2 million rupee donation from Biva International School, Colombo, today. Students of Biva College International raised 2 million 95 thousand rupees to donate to the Little Hearts Project, which aims to build a 10 story building to facilitate a cardiology unit. The students had raised the funds to the college walk held in January this year. In uh, helping these lives, we can be happy that we have uh, shared uh, what we have with the most deserving in the world. So I take this opportunity to thank Derana in a special way for giving us this opportunity to share our donation with the little hearts. By helping this, we hope we can give those children and all others in need a better life and a wonderful time so they can live their life to the fullest. The cabinet has approved to expand the possibilities of generating power via wind farming from 10% to 19% by year 2019. With that, let's take a look at other stories making news across Sri Lanka. Amateur footage showed two women being assaulted by a group of officials from the Anti-Narcotics Bureau in the Bingiria area. The officials were inspecting a residence for illicit alcohol. Four faculties of the Rajarata University have been temporarily closed following the spread of viral influenza. Students were requested to leave their hostels and return on the 26th of December. Watermelon crops in Thissa Maharama have been affected owing to substandard watermelon seeds. Farmers say that this season's crops were small in size and were inedible. Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. business segment, Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, Professor Sampath Amaratunga says, although there has been a significant improvement in poverty alleviation in Sri Lanka, considerable and serious disparities in income still remain. These disparities, he says, are evident across sectors, provinces and districts. The third Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation Meeting on Poverty Alleviation commenced today under the patronage of its Secretary General M. Shahidul Islam. The two-day meeting will see member countries deliberate on the BIMSTEC Poverty Plan of Action, which aims to identify and implement collective actions for poverty alleviation in BIMSTEC member states. It has been identified that while poverty rates have declined in all regions, progress has been uneven. Furthermore, the reduction in extreme poverty between 2012 and 2013 was mainly driven by countries in East Asia and the Pacific. In Sri Lanka, however, the poverty headcount index in 1990, which was 26.1%, has now reduced to 4.1%. It is heartening to see that the Bay of Bengal region is not lagging behind in the global fight against poverty. Things have changed for the better in the recent years as all the BIMSTEC member states have achieved significant progress in reducing the number of population under poverty line. However, there still remain millions of people in our region who suffer from acute poverty. As Sri Lanka has achieved exemplary success in poverty alleviation. Speaking here, Vice-Chancellor of the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, Professor Sampat Amrutunga said that Sri Lanka must consider it a top priority to re-ensure that economic growth is inclusive. The work to end extreme poverty is far from over and a number of challenges still remain. Although the poverty headcount ratio at 1.9 is lower in Sri Lanka, at 3.2, 
a day is a bit alarming. Poverty is high in a state sector and low in the urban sector. In Sri Lanka, the growth process is centered around the commercial capital Colombo and suburb. So we need to trickle down the benefit of development to rural sectors as well. British Premier Theresa May pitched her plan for a Brexit transition period with unchanged access to European Union markets to lawmakers yesterday when she addressed Parliament about her latest negotiating trip to Brussels. May secured an agreement last week to move previously deadlocked talks forward onto the topic of interim and long-term trading arrangements. In a statement to the House of Commons, she set out the framework of a time-limited implementation period designed to smooth Britain's EU exit and provide clarity for businesses and citizens. We would not be in the single market or the customs union as we will have left the European Union, but we would propose that our access to one another's markets would continue as now, while we prepare and implement the new processes and new systems that will underpin our future partnership. During this period, we intend to register new arrivals from the EU as preparation for our future immigration system. And we will prepare for our future independent trade policy by negotiating and, where possible, signing trade deals with third countries, which could come into force after the conclusion of the implementation period. And it's becoming clear that many on the government benches want to use Brexit to rip up rights at work environmental standards, consumer protections and to deregulate our economy. For many on the benches opposite, Mr Speaker, Brexit is the chance to make Britain a tax haven for the super-rich. At the Sri Lankan Bowes, shares fell for the third straight session today to their lowest close in more than eight months as investors offloaded banking and diversified stocks. The All Share Price Index ended 0.33 weaker at 6,325.46, its lowest close since the 11th of April. Let's now cross over to Meshri Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange for more details. The market capitalization at the end of the day was 2,880.04 billion rupees. Today's foreign purchases were 187.91 million rupees and foreign sales were 161.25 million rupees. There were two crossings today and the crossing turnover was 103.37 million rupees. Well, Palestine is set to call for an emergency meeting of the UN General Assembly after the US vetoed a Security Council resolution calling for the withdrawal of its declaration that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. President Donald Trump reversed decades of US policy on the 6th of December and recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, leaving Middle East peace efforts in peril and upsetting the Arab world as well as Western allies. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas yesterday convened a meeting of the Palestinian leadership in Ramallah to discuss Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital and in brief opening remarks said he would seek membership of 22 international organizations and agreements without naming them and said he would continue to do so on a weekly basis. The United States was further isolated yesterday over Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem when it blocked a United Nations Security Council call for the declaration to be withdrawn. The remaining 14 council members voted in favor of the Egyptian-drafted resolution, which expressed deep regret at recent decisions concerning the status of Jerusalem. We are moving within 48 hours as it requires to call for an emergency meeting of the General Assembly under the title uh, United for Peace in order to present again the same resolution as it was uh, presented today to go to the, to the General Assembly. There the Americans won't have the veto 
and they will cast their vote as equal as the other members of the General Assembly. And U.S. President Donald Trump announced a new national security strategy yesterday, stressing the message of America first and envisioning countries in constant competition. This is the 17th report of its kind since the former Reagan administration began similar submissions to the U.S. Congress in 1987. Trump said the report, which has been developed for over a year, features principled realism and focuses on four themes – protecting the homeland, promoting American prosperity, demonstrating peace through strength and advancing American influence in an ever-competitive world. He said the U.S. should accept that vigorous military, economic and political contests are playing out all around the world and vehemently blasted the failures of his predecessors, saying U.S. citizens watched as Washington politicians presided over one disappointment after another. Highlighting the expansion of the Islamic State as one such disappointment, Trump said that he will not tolerate the disappointments anymore and will defend a string of his highly controversial decisions of retreating from job-killing deals and unfair Paris climate accord, as well as decertifying the Iran nuclear deal. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Dharana 24-7. Well, in cricket, the team representing Sri Lanka in the last man stands World Championship in South Africa returned to the island last evening after winning the championship. Sri Lanka thrashed South Africa Rebels by 85 runs in the final on Saturday. After winning the toss, Sri Lanka piled on 201 runs for the loss of seven wickets in 20 overs. In reply, the South African side could only muster 116 for the loss of six wickets in their 20 overs. Well, England captain Joe Root refused to blame his senior players for the tourists' stunning Ashes defeat yesterday and insisted his side had not been blown away by Australia despite losing the first three matches of the five test series. Four years after Alistair Cook's side surrendered the Ashes at the WACA in Perth with two matches to spare, Root's team handed back the urn just as meekly at the same venue with an innings and 41 run hiding before tea on day five. England will head to the test on the 26th of December in Melbourne with a number of questions over the futures of open Alistair Cook and Paceman Stuart Broad. All-rounder Moyen Ali is also under the microscope after a forgettable campaign with the bat and ball. The skipper also had to battle other off-field distractions and accusations of a problem drinking culture in the England camp. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the ball to move laterally and came against two players in, in good form that played wonderful innings and sort of took the game away from us. And what makes it even more frustrating is the next morning, straight away, we managed to, um, to get both of them out. But the effort and the way the guys, um, the attitude of the, of the team was, was very good throughout this week. Watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dharana 24 7. A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Now, if you take a look at the map, you can see that temperatures are to vary between 20 and 28 degrees Celsius over the course of the day. Now, we can expect a low pressure zone in formation in the eastern and towards the central region of the island and will gradually extend towards the western part of the island. Now, we can expect some thunder showers in Chafna, Trinkamali, Mana, and Anuradhapura area. And moving downwards, we can also expect some thunder showers in the Colombo and Kandy area. That is it from your weather centre tonight. Let's now take a quick look at your city by city forecast. That's all on First at 9 for tonight. But before we go, we would like to take you to the Asaru Park in Talavatagore. The park spreads over 60 acres on the Kote Marshes near Parliament, where over 50 species of birds, including several species of migrant birds, along with butterflies, dragonflies, reptiles and fish, inhabit the wetlands. The site is even a hideout of the elusive 
fishing cat. Enjoy these visuals. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. Bringing you the news and information